There you go. That should keep the draft off our bell. Ah, oh, it's very nice, but um, I'm a bit pushed, sack, so I'll see you later. Oh, uh, Lisa, love her. Now, I've noted against you checking on young Roy. But you need the help. But putting him on proper tax and national insurance makes all your business doings traceable. Huh. That's the way I want it. Have you gone soft? Once you're on their computers, you, you become a slave to the state, and then they'll bleed you dry. Look, I am sick to death of this family grubbing about in the black economy. I'm forever looking over my shoulder, waiting for the knock on the door, and it's got to stop. Look, I'm nipping this daft idea in the bud right now. If you employ Roy, it's cash in hand. End of story! Oh. What do you think? It's a bell jar. Eh? Well, we put this on the sideboard, right? Then every week he's was chipping some out of his earnings and we can buy treats and toys in that for our bell. Oh, Butch, what a lovely idea. Come and give us a kiss, you great big bag of sugar. You don't have to contribute, Dad. I know you don't earn out now, being a house husband and that. I'll pay my way. Just like I always have. Hey, I'm not surprised you're feeling bad. You were boozing for Britain last night. So did I make a complete pillock of myself then? Yeah, then time's up by three. Can you not face the lads? Oh, no, I uh, just didn't want to wake them up, that's all. Oh, you mean you're sneaking off? Well, yeah, before they give me another talking to. Cheers, mate. Well, best of luck to you, and I hope your dad's on the men soon. Yeah, thanks. I'll be back. Well, just in case you know. What's this then? A memento. It's the video of your rugby trial. Ah, oh, right, yeah. My finest hour. You scored a try? Yeah, about the end time I did score in this village. <laughs> hey, Will. You're a good lad. Look after yourself, eh? Yeah, and you, Terry. I'll see you around. Just a courier, thanks. Not surprised you look gutted, the amount of bail money have you lost. Kim's had you for a real mug. It's very easy to be wise after the event. Wasn't it you who blamed the Dingles? Maybe. But then you were there when the actual event was happening, round at the Marchant's Cottage. I mean, talk about having the wool pulled over your eyes. I don't want to discuss it. Oh, well, the rest of the village do. Talking about nothing else. Keep the change. You really are a nasty piece of work, Viv Windsor. Yeah. Why'd you have to be such a bag? Ain't Zoe suffered enough without you having a pop? Well, in my opinion, she was due a fool. Zoe is the most loyal and trusting person I know. Oh, yes, and look where it's got her. She's a mug. And if you trust Kim Tate, you deserve everything you get. Oh. When they were dishing out the milk of human kindness, your share must have been well soured. Can't go on. I'm a willing worker, but even I've got me limits. Uh, another ten crates of mixers to bring up. Oh, Grandad, I'm doing the job of free here. You've got to get some more staff in. Well, first priority, new manager. Oh, yeah? Got anyone in mind? Well, between you and I, I don't think I'll have to look very far. Oh, really? Oh, watch this space. I certainly will, Grandad. Well, come on, let's get these other crates. Oh, no, you sit down. I'll finish bottling up. Zoe, I'm off to see Chris up in the new business. Care to join me? Uh, sorry, I'm far too busy. Isn't it time you and Chris made up? We already have, thank you very much. I've wished him all the best for today. But I have a business to run too. Fine. Mm. I was hoping for some advice, actually, about me and Chris. Oh. I don't believe Cathy still has feelings for him. Which would leave the way open for me, but I want to be sure. Do you think I should have a woman-to-woman -woman chat with her? Am I the village agony aunt or something? No, but you are Chris's sister. I value your opinion. Don't you think I've got enough problems of my own at the moment? 
Sorry for asking. Me too. I'm sick of being everybody's sounding board. Excuse me, I've got work to do. I'll come straight to the point. Do you want a job? Doing what? What do you think? When you did the work round at my garage before, miracles getting that heap up and running again. Oh, well, it's got did a lot at all. I know, but you've got the right attitude, and anyway, I want a lad who's willing to learn and is already a bit handy. All right, you're on. Cheers, Liz. <laughs> oh, uh, if Zach asks you about your wages, you say no. What? Well, it's just a little bit of a misunderstanding we're having. Right. Is that Will just going? Oh, it was Lisa. She's just giving me a job. <sighs> Has he gone already, then? Do you not hear me? I've just got a job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Super smashing. Yeah. Have you seen Will? No, I was out cracking on. I feel a bit bad we weren't up to see him off. I'll be back. Oh, my head hurts. Oh, flaming minute. Have you seen the time? Cathy's gonna kill us. Oh, no, she might kill you, but I'm not due till after dinner, pal. Ah, oh, think again. Cathy's off to Chrissy's grand opening today, and who said he'd cover for her? Uh... Oh, egg. <laughs> <laughs> Excited, nervous. Frank would be really proud of you. If Dad was here, he'd tell me I'd done the rotors wrong, not ordered enough diesel. But yeah, I guess you're right. Looks like your friend. And that is all she is. Hi. Hi. Someone miss a kick off? Good of you to come, Laura. Guess I'd better get started. Lads, lads. Gather around, will you? Look, I'll keep this short. It's business as usual. As you know, the wages are the same as before. But if you do some good work for me, we'll be looking at upping the rates before the summer. Oh, and just because I'm in this, don't think I'm an easy touch. Anyone messes with me or puts in sloppy work, they're out. Out. Play ball, your jobs are safe. Let's get the show on the road. Sorry, Mr. T. No one's going anywhere. Truck at the front won't start. Well, what's wrong with it? No idea, yeah. Point is, it's blocking in all the other trucks. Well, that's a brilliant start. First morning, one lorry's off the road, and the rest are going to be late for delivering. There's no use crying over spilt milk. Let's get this one sorted and get the others on the road. I just want you to know that you don't have to call me boss. Yeah, no about? It's not official yet, but I can tell you. Grandad's making me a new bar manager of the Woolpack. Who the flaming kill him? What's the matter with you? He's giving you the job he promised me! And why would you think that? Girl, talk about green. Come on. You and me are going to have a little word with Grandad. Hey, you don't want to let Zoe catch you doing that. What's the big deal? I've finished all the surgery work. Nobody's called. Two things. One, Zoe's in the foulest of moods. Yeah, tell me about it. And two, we pay you to work for us not to do your own work. Well, if I wasn't doing this, I'd just be sat here twiddling my thumbs. You know, you could get a lot out of this job if you just threw yourself into it a bit more. Can I come out with you again, then? Uh, there's no way. I'm, I'm far too busy this afternoon. Uh, oh, and remember, beware the wrath of Zoe. <sighs> Oi, Judas! I want a word with you. Excuse me? You promised me a year ago you trained me up to be bar manager. Yes, I did. But you were so busy setting up your business in the barn, we didn't have the chance. A anyway, you walked out on me twice. Oh, I see. So now you're giving up on me. Beg your pardon? You're giving her the bar manager's job. Randy, have you been at the gin bottle? Oh, take the notice of her granddad. She's just got a bad attack of jealousy about me being put in charge. But, but you're not. What? Being put in charge. But you said this morning. 
Oh, Tricia, I'm sorry. You got the wrong end of the stick. What I meant was there are plenty of experienced bar managers in the Hotton area. Well, thanks a lot. Well, you just haven't got the experience. But I have. No, I, I'm, I'm advertising the job. You're welcome to apply, that's fine. But don't consider that it's yours by right. Then if she's applying, then so am I. Guess what? I've just got myself a new job. It's good. Don't go overboard about it, will you? Yeah, I'm sorry, son. I'm pleased for you. What are you doing? Trainee mechanic with Lisa. What are you doing? Moping over dawn. Ah, she goes to Beatha tomorrow. Why don't you go with her? That wasn't meant to be, Roy. I suppose it's up to you, but I think you're wrong. <laughs> Trying to get rid of me? Yeah, we don't case full time if you stay this flaming miserable. Don't rub it in. There you go. Mm. Hello? Anybody there? Sorry, I was miles away. You're not alone, you know. What? Well, over the years, Kim's conned half the people in the village. Doesn't make me feel any better, Biff. Everyone thinks I'm an idiot, and they're right. Oh, most people would have every sympathy with you. You obviously haven't heard the gossip, then. We well, shouldn't listen to the busybodies. Listen, why don't you get Paddy to take you out? He's good at cheering people up. Biff, I live with Paddy. I work with him. My being cheered up does not involve me spending the entire 24 hours of each day with him. OK, it's just an idea, that's all. But, uh, excuse me, I've got some correspondence to sort. Suit yourself. Well? I can't see what's wrong with it. Well, tow the thing out of the way. We've already lost precious time. Sorry, Chris. I hate to leave with all this going on, but I did promise Biff I'd get back for lunchtime. Well, thanks for coming. Don't worry, we'll get this sorted. Hang on. Look. What is it? Someone's put sugar in the tank. You've been sabotaged. Sorted. I best get back. I told Biff I'd be there for the lunchtime rush. I can find out who did this. Yeah. Thanks for coming. All right. Bye. Must have been kids. That's who you think it was. Just kids. Well, what do you say? Sure it's not someone with a grudge? Oh, I don't think so. Kim's probably in South America by now. I was thinking of competitors. Whatever. Must fix that perimeter fencing. Well, the company you use for home farm quarry were good. I don't suppose you'd stay here and help me out. You really have got a cheek. What? I've done quite a lot for you recently. And I haven't had so much as a thank you. Thank you. That's better. I haven't had a chance to ring for another temp. Anyway, it'll give me an excuse to keep you around for a while. Why would you want to do that? Perhaps I enjoy your company. What makes you think I haven't got better things to do with my time? Why have you? It's pretty exciting being in on the start of all this. Yeah, I'll help you out for a while, as a friend. Thanks. And you are a good friend. Oh, Paddy, we're almost out of ketamine. You were meant to order some more. Yes, I know. It's arriving tomorrow. That's a Zoe. Nothing. Well, this isn't actually about ketamine, is it? But Kim. No. It's about me. I'm a sad, lonely woman, Paddy. Don't be daft. You've got tons of mates. Think about it. There's plenty of people I know, but close friends? I don't think so. You need to let your hair down a bit. A few glasses of wine won't solve my problems. I don't mean that. I mean, go and have some fun. Go wild. It's easy for you. If you want a relationship or to go out on the pool, you just pop into your local pub or club. I can't do that in the village or even in Hotton. It just isolates me. You go out socialising in Leeds, then. Plenty of gay clubs. That's hardly my style. How do you know? We tried it. Not for years. We'll try it again. Paddy, I'm not just after a one-night stand. Why not? I enjoy it. I don't think so. Thanks. 
honest to God, Kelly, Paddy and Zoe are doing my head in. He's on some kind of power trip and she's going around the bend. Oh, poor Zoe. She's had a terrible week. Yeah, but she's taking it on everybody else. I tell you, I'll be glad when you come back to work. I've had enough. Well, it might be a while yet. What do you mean? Well, in case it had escaped your notice, my dad got murdered. Yeah, I know. It must still be really hard for you, but, well, maybe it's time you start to look forward. You really don't understand. You can't keep living in the past. And it's not what your dad would have wanted, either. Everyone keeps telling me what my dad would have wanted. None of you have got a clue. I'm just trying to be helpful. It will stick your helpful. There you go. said I'm not thirsty anymore, either. Thanks. You must have candy floss for brains. How could you think Alan was going to give you the bad manager's job? It was a simple misunderstanding. And what makes you think you could run the wool pack? I can change the beer, do stock, do accounts. Yeah, but I rather think Grandad's looking for someone a bit more glamorous. Well, he won't want a stick insect then, will he? I'll tell you something for nothing. Grandad doesn't know it yet, but that manager job is mine. Can we have a private word? Well, you can say anything in front of Laura. OK. You've got troubles. We've lost three of our best drivers to Reynolds haulage. What? Sean Reynolds is deliberately poaching them off you. Who is this guy? Only the man who nearly put the last owner out to business. Should have realised. That's why I got the business at such a bargain price. Don't worry, Pete, I don't scare easily. You haven't met him. He's pretty tough. And he hasn't met me. Just thought you ought to know. Do you want me to put the word out for some new drivers? Yeah. Yeah, thanks, Pete. Do you think Reynolds was the one behind the sugar in the tank? Dunno. But he's picked the wrong man if he wants to travel. I thrive on a challenge. So do I, Chris. So do I. Done for the day. Oh, blimey times, Flo. Yeah, it does when you enjoy yourself. You know, I reckon you and me, we make quite a good team. Ah. Roy. Well, I'll, uh, I'll see you tomorrow then, eh? Ah. Isaac. All right. <laughs> well? Well, what? Is he working cash in hand? No. I ordered you not to get involved with the tax. Zach, this is my garage. And as Butch pointed out this morning, you are not the breadwinner in the house. So from now on, the financial decisions are up to me. Look, if it's uh, any consolation, I know why you're feeling so fed up. Remember when Dave and Linda died? I just got sick to black tea for people constantly telling me how I should, how I should feel. I mean, even my mum. Well, at least she loved Dave and Linda. Biff's been such a heartless cow. It's not my dad never existed. Look, if you want to come round to the cottage tonight for a talk or open, we'll have a place for ourselves. Yeah, please. I just want to talk to someone who understands how I'm feeling. It's all right, no problem. <sighs> Whatever's happened between me and you in the past, uh, I just want to say that I'll always be there for you. I don't deserve you. You're so sweet. See you later, eh? Potato, Ned? Nah. Look, Dawn's not going till tomorrow. It's not too late to change your mind. <laughs> it's 30 years too late. Me and Dawn are in the past. How do you know that for sure? I've not to offer her, Jack. Any woman for that matter. Oh, Ned, listen to yourself. You're getting old before your time. Ain't that just the truth? Then do something about it. Oh, aye, I'll just wave my magic wand and conjure up what? A farm? A bank account full of money? A flash new car. Oh, honestly, Ned, you can be so negative. Well, I'm sorry. But I can't see any reason to be Mr Positive. 
What have I got to show for 50 odd years on God's earth, eh? A bag full of worn out clothes, and that's about it. Evening. Are you coming in or what? No, I'm just waiting for someone. Right. You know this is a gay bar. Oh, uh, I think my friend must have told me the wrong place. Well, just in case your friend did get the right place, why don't you go inside and wait? The women are really friendly. I'm by myself. I'd be a bit conspicuous. You won't be on your own for long. How do you mean? Come on. You're gorgeous. Thanks, but uh, like I said, I think I've got the wrong place. Suit yourself. from people is life goes on and try to look forward. Just stupid cliches. They don't know how I'm feeling. Folk get embarrassed by grief. And that's why they say daft stuff sometimes. I remember <laughs> Betty once telling me that not to worry about our Linda because she'll probably be working happily in some little Bet's business in heaven. <laughs> See, the thing is, unless you've lost someone who's close to you, you can't understand. <sighs> I, mean, I still think about Dave and Linda most days. I miss them. I miss my dad, Roy. Sometimes I feel like my heart's going to burst. Look, if, if I can help you in any way at all, even if you just want someone to talk to, Give us a ring. I know how you're feeling. I want to help you. Fancy a pint at the Woolpack? No, I'm not in the mood. I'll do you good to get out for a couple of hours. Come on, I'll drive. I've said no. I have had just about enough of this. Do you know what I think? I think you're not going to Ibiza with Dawn because you haven't got the bottle. Think what you like. And I wish you would go, because I am sick of your self-pity putting a downer on everything in this house. Ain't exactly the greatest of times lately, you know. Look, Dawn is obviously keen on you. You've got the chance to start a new life, and as usual, you're too damn scared to do anything about it. You don't know what you're talking about. I'm not going because I won't live off a woman. Got some pride left, you know. Oh, really? Your pride certainly hasn't stopped you living off us. Maybe we should drop it for now. No, no, let me finish. He's been here for months, and in all that time, he hasn't tried to look for anywhere else. Sarah. No. I've had enough, Ned. You depress the life out of everyone in this house, and I'm not having you dragging us down anymore. So what are you saying? I want you to move out. 